What's up guys? Good morning. We got a little bit of snow last night. Not much, a little bit. It was not on the radar, but I could hear it hitting the roof and kind of sliding off the roof last night. I just shut the heater off at night because I'm warm enough in my sleeping bag so it wasn't really melting or sticking to the roof. But it turned out to be about an inch. It's kind of turning to like rain, heavy, wet air right now. So I'll put the rain jacket on. Uh, about to have some breakfast. Gonna drive a, slow, a small breakfast into me this morning. A couple pieces of toast, some hot coffee, and get after it for, for some big pike. They should be biting a little bit better today, even though yesterday was a great day in my opinion. This is the second day of the trip. Technically the third day, because the first day I came out and set up, but yesterday was the first day fishing. Six in there. It's uh, 21 degrees right now. It's still spitting a little bit out there. Camera stuff, auger battery, bait, traps, I think that's everything. Electronics, jig rod, yeah we should be good to go. marker there's a big old china he's probably six seven inches here's a tip for you guys if you're ever using big bait or actually for any bait when you go to hook it don't do it over or near the hole just in case he slips out or jumps out of your hand and goes down then you're giving the fish a free meal and with the cost of shiners nowadays it's pretty expensive and I don't know if you could see that but there's a big scale on the point from where I came out 
it's really important to remove those scales off the tips regardless of what size hook or bait you're using because those scales are so hard that could prevent you from driving that hook home and setting that hook on a big fish i've seen guys lose giants and still have that scale on on the tip so there's a tip that might might land you a big fish a lot of guys that that go for these big pike they like to set right on the bottom i prefer to put that shiner up a little bit give it in put it up in the kill zone where it's way more visible <laughs> you know shiners they know where the kill zone is they don't spend any time there they're either way up top in the surface of a pond or they're way down bottom in the grass and the weeds they're not hanging out in that middle or, or up off the bottom in the kill zone so part of the reason why i put them in the kill zone one is so they're super visible if any pike swims by and he's 30 feet away he's going to see that where if it's on the bottom or real close to the bottom that shiner could be hiding behind some grass or it could be hiding behind some structure but whereas i'm putting them up higher he can't do that and then the other thing is whereas those shiners have that natural instinct not to be in that kill zone not to be hanging around up off the bottom like that they work a lot harder for you to try to get to the bottom and to get out of that kill zone so rather than that shiner just sitting there being lazy all day he's going to actually work for you we're good all right there's four traps in i think i'm going to jig a little bit today so i can't put a fifth line in the fifth line is going to be my jig rod let's go all right coffee and a couple jig rods and we're ready to go got him now what <laughs> This is a really light line. There he is. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> All right, first one on the palm rod. I don't know if you're supposed to try to reel him in or just hand line him, but hand lining seemed to be the best option in that case. This thing is gonna be a weapon on smelt. Got him. Still got him. <laughs> this is like ultra light battle. Make it a little eight inch crappy. Look like a monster pike. Whoo, she bent right over. I think this is three pound test. Got him! There he is, guys. Got him on the palm rod. That is the ultralight. Popped right out. Bitch.
Ooh, that's not a bad one. Got you that time. Third time's a charm. Oh, it's not very charming. Man. There he is. Oh, nice one. What is this? He's fighting pretty good. Oh, <laughs> rock bass, baby. <laughs> there it is. Oh, got him good. Wow. Rock bass. Guys, I know you guys that are viewing this from other states, you you hate these things or you get a billion of them, but here in Maine, this is the only place that you could find them. They're not even supposed to be here. People don't even know they're here. And that is a staving nice rock bass. I'm gonna eat him up. They're pretty good eating. Let's get rid of him, see if there's more down there. I just located this rock with the live scope. I was set up over there. And I put the live scope down and looked ahead and 40 foot away I found a really nice boulder that had some panfish on it. So I brought a, a trap over with a big shiner in case there's a pike near it. You know, pike relate to structure like everything else. And then I dropped this jig down and just as soon as I dropped her down, got that baby. Let's see if we can get another one. They school up, they're schooling fish. Sweet. Yeah, another fish down there. Not sure if it's a rock bass or a... Oh, here he comes. Ah. There's two or three down there, so maybe we'll get one to go. There's one on it. Got him. Got him. He feels rock bassy. He feels pretty good. Stay pegged, you dog. Stay pegged. I'll even kneel down for him. Oh yeah. There it is. That's the state record rock bass right there, baby. Woohoo! One of these years, the state's gonna recognize me catching these things. Look at that slab. He is chunky. Sweet. Big old red eye on him. They don't quite have the red eyes that they have in the summer. to get the other camera show you what what I'm looking at all right there's that big rock that's actually my shiner and my weight and the rest of these are probably rock bass if they're not crappy let's get down there and see if we can start a feeding frenzy there's two oh I missed them shoot He's all over it. There's about ten of them there. These might be crappy. They could be rock bass. About to find out. There he is. Got him. Got him. Another rock bass. Another good one. Oh no, I thought it was a rock bass. Shoot. What are you doing in here? Crappy. You won't see a guy more excited over a rock bass than me, probably. The biologist's been out here trying to catch these things too, and 
they haven't had any luck. They've been behind me a couple times. Pretty plump. That's what they look like, guys, if, if you live in Maine and you've never seen one before. The closest I ever caught them before here was Lake Champlain. And, you know, out-of-staters will tell you they're a menace, but I, I like them. They're good eating, and they're pretty aggressive. They're fun to catch. They give you a heck of a fight on a jig rod. But they kind of look like somewhere in between a crappie and a largemouth, I guess. Probably got to get a little closer to that rock. That rock is about 11 foot away from this. So three, six, nine. Pretty close right here. I think I'll swap these two. I think he's on. Got him. Got him. He feels heavy. Feels like another RB. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rock bass. Woohoo! <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. Crushing these rock bass. Nice. Big old slab of meat right there, guys. Wow. That's uh, that hole's eight inches, so he's he's over ten. Slamming the rock bass. Never would have found these fish without the live scope, and I I didn't see them on the live scope. I saw the the thing that gave them away was that one rock. There's a piece of ledge right there, in probably 23 to 25 foot of water. So I wanted to come over here and set up near it for pike and see what kind of panfish were on it. And man got into the rock bass. This is definitely the newest invasive species for the state of Maine. As far as I know, I was the only guy that ever caught him ice fishing. That video you saw with the new state record where the, where the game warden came out and checked him out and said, yeah, that's state record, but we don't really recognize him yet as a state. So as soon as I start recognizing him, hopefully I get the state record for a day or two. Cause I just beat my state record for last time right there, Bob. That's like an 11 inch rock bass. All right, guys, it's midday and I have not had a single flag. Sometimes that happens when you're fishing big bait, going after big fish. It's definitely had something to do with the storm. Some storms you could just pound the fish. Some storms aren't, aren't as productive. I moved the traps a couple times. I know a couple of them are in perfect money spots. So I know it's just a matter of them not feeding right now. Maybe they fed last night. Maybe they're going to feed this afternoon. So got the hopes that they're going to feed this afternoon. In the meantime, I'm having a blast going around and popping some crappy and yellow perch and rock bass. That's unbelievable. I've hit the state's top three most wanted invasive species in two days. I got two out of three today and just looking for another northern pike today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some lunch, throw a couple hot dogs in the old gullet, and then I think I might go after some jumbo yellows. I haven't decided yet if I want to hammer some more on those rock bass or go after some jumbo yellows. Maybe I'll do the rock bass first since I'm still set up over there on that rock. And uh... Oh, yes sir, we got a flag up, just went up. I just looked out there. I knew driving a hot dog into my gullet would help. All right, what do I need? 
I got cameras, I got my catch bag, I got an extra shiner. All I need is a little courage and go catch me a giant. Let's go, fellas. dogs in there all right this is actually the first flag of the day let's hope she's spooling well she is off to the side a little let's get you guys set up and hopefully i get a giant ah, she's still not moving yeah kind of off to the side but not much Might be three. <laughs> I like those bakers a lot, those baker easy outs. Those are two absolute must haves for pike fishing. All right, let's see what he weighs. What do you guys think? Was I big eyeing him when I said four pounds? Is this thing gonna work? Yeah, it works. We'll zero up with this thing. Pretty even grabs it. Zero. Okay. That scales junk because he's over two friggin' pounds. Let's try the other scale. That scale is about 40 years old. Seven one pounds. So I was there. I was right on the money. A little over. A little over four pounds. So almost five pounds. All right, let's get him back so he can grow up to be a giant. There he is, folks. Three, I got the three today on the state's most wanted hit list. Come 
bora. Got him. It's gotta be a crappie, I think. Is it a rock? It's gotta be a crappie. It might be a decent crappie for here. Oh man, that's a big crappie for here. That's the biggest crappie I've ever caught here. That is a slabber. That is a big one for here, folks. That is a monster for here. That's a big slabber. That one's going to go home. Now, nah, you know what? You know what? On second thought, I could bring a lot of small ones home. Let's let him go to grow bigger and give those big seeds. That is a slabber. Woohoo! Nice. That was awesome. I, I, everything about it said crappy when I, when I saw him on the screen, but he fought so hard. I thought it was a rock bass because that's way bigger than any crappy I've caught out of here. Crappy. All right, nice. Pretty fish right there. There's a decent one. That's a good one right there. That's a good eater size right there. He's a 12 incher, so we'll take that one home with us. Got him. Little yellow. Not a bad yellow. Get him. A little better. Oh, fat one. Nice. Got him. Right in the hole. Little guy. Yeah, they're fun to catch too. Yeah. That feels better. That might be a jumbo. That might be a jumbo. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a mega jumbo. <laughs> Look at that one, guys. All right. That is a big girl. That's probably 13 incher, maybe more. Look at the size of that one. Dang you. Dang you.
Ooh, that might be better. That might be a little better. Big fat one. He is about 10 incher. Another nice slab. Those are slab crappy. I'll take them. They're pretty in this place. Twelve and a half -er. Another slabber. Another 12 incher. All right, I picked up a couple traps. I still got two out. I just checked them, they were down. I'm thinking about pike fishing a little late tonight with two of those lines and just see if maybe they're feeding at night because they certainly weren't feeding today. <laughs> Temperature right now is pretty mild. I think it's 18, the last I checked. It got a little bit colder today. It started out, at, it uh, got down to like 14. Then it warmed up. It snowed and rained and then got real sunny. It was weird. last of the traps up. Didn't have much fraction today from the live bait and the traps. That may have been the least amount of flags I've ever had in my life in one day of fishing. Full day, a little bit before sun up till after sundown, 
We got one flag all day. Made do with it though, caught a nice pike. It was a four and a half pounder. You know, it was awesome just to catch one, to be honest with you. Way better than catching none is a good way to look at it. I think today I fished a little bit shallower than yesterday. Yesterday I probably averaged about 30 foot deep spread out over the traps and today I bet you I was closer to 20 foot deep. I know I was in really good spots. Maybe I'm a little early. Maybe they're not in yet. Maybe they're not moving back into the coves and into the sloughs or into the drains quite yet like they will later in the year. So tomorrow I think I got a couple buddies coming out or a buddy of mine and he's bringing a couple guys out from Reboot Outdoors. Dan's going to be coming out, so fish together tomorrow. Should be a great day. Today, the jig rod really made the day. I caught, geez, I must have caught over 50 crappie today. So many between 10 and 12 inches. I got a couple big ones over, over 12 inches, close to 14 probably. And then catching those rock bass is just... I'm, it's, I know you guys are going to laugh that live out of state and you just shake those things off all night and day, but we don't have them here in Maine. Like these are the only ones that anyone knows about in Maine. They've been here for a few years now in this body of water. As far as I know, I'm the only guy who's caught them ice fishing. I caught them a couple of years ago ice fishing and the warden was there and he was really surprised to see him and how big they were. I went back and tried to catch them and shoot a really cool video and I never found them again after that. And I released quite a few that day. I killed some, but released some. We ate them and they were tremendous. So these three that I caught today are definitely going in the fry pan. Probably not tonight, but they'll be, they'll be going in the fry pan for sure. And then it was fun catching perch and catching crappie. So the jig rod really paid off today and it was fun hopping around. I caught all three of Maine's most invasive species. I got the Northern Pike, which is the most hated. It's been here over 45 years now. I caught the Black Crappie, which has been here over 25 years now. And I caught the Rock Bass, which is pretty well unknown and we don't know how long it's been here. I think the first one I ever caught was about 10 years ago in Maine and it was the same body of water. Tonight I am gonna hammer on some deer steak and probably some mashed potatoes because what's better than steak and potatoes uh, should be a nice quick easy meal with some poblano peppers thrown in there and looking forward to that and maybe doing a little bit of reading tonight and hitting the hay because i'm a little bit worn out i drilled a lot of holes the last couple days weather wise today was a really weird day we had a lot of rain and a little bit of sleep mixed in this morning and then it just came off super super sunny and then it got a little windy and cold this afternoon. Current temp is 22 degrees, so it's still making a little bit of ice, not a lot. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, really excited to fish with Dan again. It's been, it's been at least a year since I fished with Dan, maybe two years. So I'm excited to do that. He's a lot of fun. I think you guys are really going to enjoy him and enjoy him on camera. So make sure you tune in for tomorrow's episode. Thanks a lot for watching today's. and. Yesterday's is right here if you missed that one guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Feel free to comment, like, or even hit the unlike if you don't like it. <laughs> See you on the next one guys. Thanks again. You know, I don't think I saw a person all day today. Yep, that's the truth. That's kind of cool. No one else out fishing. Nobody around. That's a big one. Let it go. Let it go oh back. My God. Let it go back. Let it go back. Let it... That's a. That's 18. I'm literally <laughs> shaking right now. It's not even. A, it's not even a, that big. I mean, it's big, big, yeah, but. Failure, huh? That's how you play a fish, boys. <laughs> hey, back. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The 16, 17. Yeah, 16, 17. Look at the back. Who's going to grab the fish? Oh, shoot. Get, get his head up. Get his head up.
Good, good. Yeah! Oh, there we go. That's the biggest. There we go, buddy. Oh, yeah, that's small. Don't lose a finger. Don't lose a finger. 15.75 uh, on the bump board. 1.55 pounds. Um, so we're going to weigh. Nice one. Way to big Gator! Yeah! Way to big Gator! <laughs>